good morning friends welcome to third session of english 2 in previous session we had studied second chapter the meaning of education this story has been written by cyril anthony george today before we starting exercises and word meaning i will tell you the theme of this story the theme of story is the fact that education is not only accumulation of knowledge but a holistic development where along with knowledge the person becomes good human being and i will quote the words of a great thinker the famous thinker john locke once said that at birth each one of us enters the world as a tabula rasa tabula rasa means clean slate or blank slate during our lifetime it is up to us to fill in the slate that is where education plays an important role when we attend a school and study lessons that or taught us we gain knowledge however the most knowledgeable person could still become an educated person if he is not good human being it is only when the person develop holistically that he becomes truly educated to be truly educated one must have high ethical standard and contribute in their own way to a better society dear friends getting education getting perfection in a particular subject should not be our aim along with education we should be helpful to others we should try to increase the standard of others should be helpful to our society to our friends to the back benches then our aim of education will be fulfilled students you have also seen in your class some writer students don't like to give help don't like to be helpful to others they avoid them and some writers some of them being helpful to others they like to help others they spend their own time on the sake of back benches and they in this way they are trying to uh, fulfill the aim of education and by helping their classmates they become the hero of the class now i am going to enlight the story the education the meaning of education the writer has used characters in this story the main characters are anita nandini doctor anita's father and anita's mother the writer has set the story in anita's school and her home Now I am going to tell you the plot of the story. Nandini and Anita, sorry, Nandini and Anita were classmates. Both were good at their studies. Nandini was liberal, honest, cooperative. Anita was proud and did not help others. Anita. was jealous of nandini who helped others and was liked by all her classmates on the day of english exam nandini arrived late for the exam and she was not able to write the exam properly after the exam nandini was surrounded by her classmates 
and they started asking why was he late for the exam you know isn't good people never tell what they do for others so she did not tell anything she simply told them that she was a little bit late anita made fun of nandini and only to go home and find that un that nandini had been late for the exam because she had helped her father who suffered a stroke during his morning walk she reached him to the hospital and saved his life anita realized that she had done serious mistake in hating nandini who was so good and did not bear any grudge grudge means jealous or bitterness but even forwent forwent means left her exam so as to save her father's life anita apologizes to nandini and turn over a new leaf after this incident she was totally changed and she became nandini's best friend dear friends now the story is over now i'm going to start exercises which is given in your book first one given in a sign attributive noun second phrase third class and then detail kinds of phrases so first we discuss about attributive noun you should know in english we use noun to describe describe adjective right you have seen you have when you read your book you will find attributive nouns are used in the book like question paper answer paper exam schedule these are the example of attributive noun so first now i'm going to tell you the definition of attributive noun when noun one noun is used to describe another noun and functions as an adjective is called an attributive noun again i'm repeating when one noun is used to describe another noun and functions as an adjective it is called attributive noun like cheese sandwich cucumber sandwich coffee pot and start now friends we will complete the first exercise attributive noun what is given in your book here write suitable attributive noun to go with these nouns i am writing here see this is a tenth first one sandwich what is given here sandwich now with this word you have to make attributive noun so you use suitable noun to make it attributive noun here sandwich before sandwich use suitable noun what will be said try to guess here will be try find out suitable noun to make it attributive noun so here will get sandwich before sandwich we can use cheese cheese sandwich cheese sandwich now find out one more you can say potato sandwich or cucumber sandwich cucumber sandwich
Now, second one is given pot. So, I am going to have it and write it again. Second one is pot, and before pot, you find out any suitable noun to make it attributive. You think till I am writing here. Now, second word is part, and before part, you use suitable noun to make it to make it attributive noun. Before part, you find out. Try to you try to guess what will be the suitable so noun before part. Ink, ink is also noun. So before part, you can write ink part. Ink part. Now this one is the example of attributive noun. Now you have flower part in your house. So flower is also noun. So what right? Flower, flower, part. Now third one given dress, dress, now again here, Now, by using suitable noun, make it attributive. Now, dress. Before dress, you can say night dress, evening dress. So, right here, evening dress. Evening is also noun, so right? Evening dress. Night, night dress, now here we have completed part, ink part by using noun, ink we have made attributive, now it is working as adjective, in second dress, here dress, Before this, we have applied evening, non evening, so it working as an adjective, so it will be known as attributive. Second, I have written night dress. Instead of night dress, you can write any other word, find out any suitable. Okay, yes, it is well. So instead of night dress, you can write one more party dress. Party dress, you are okay when you are going in functions, you use party dress. So here instead of you can write one more word party party dress. Now one more word given in the book that is now here you have completed dress. One more word you get you have to make it attributive it's a given the book. That one is jacket. Now See jacket, what you will get jacket, and before jacket, you will use suitable so noun to make it attributive. Now I am going to write here this one jacket. Fourth one is written here jacket. Jacket. Now, now, fourth one is given jacket. Before jacket, you use any suitable noun to make it attributive. So, jacket, you know, leather. Leather is also noun, so before jacket, you can write leather jacket. 
L E A T H E R leather jacket one more denim jacket denim is also name so right here denim denim Now in this exercise, in the book you can see, given four verb, write here write suitable noun to go with these nouns. So by using suitable noun, you will make it attributive. First was first one was given sandwich. Before sandwich, you can apply suitable noun like cheese sandwich, potato sandwich, or you can say cucumber sandwich. Second given pot. You can say coffee pot by using coffee coffee is also now coffee pot, flower pot, ink pot. Third one given grace. You can use now evening for making it at evening grace, party grace, or night grace. Fourth one is given jacket. Before jacket you can use leather leather is also now leather jacket. and denim jacket so we have made attributive nouns by using suitable nouns now in the second exercise we will discuss about phrase and clause so i would like to tell you the definition of phrase phrase is a group of words which gives some sense but not complete sense phrase is a group of word which gives some sense but not complete sense example in the corner on the road behind the tree under the table so these are the example of phrase now i will like to give you the definition of class class is a group of words which contains subject and predicate class contains one finite word you know what is finite word finite word is one which governs according to its subject when the subject will be singular we will write singular form of the verb when the subject will be plural we write plural form of the verb now i'm going to write the definition on the board you you note in your notebooks so then i'm going to write the definition of phrase you know in your notebook a group of words which gives gives some sense but not complete sense is called phrase now see sir phrase a group of words which gives some sense but not complete sense is called phrase see the example in the corner on the road behind the tree so 
these are the example of phrase. Now I'm going to give you the definition. Uh, you write the definition. See, friends, in the corner, we are from the word in the corner. We are getting sense that someone was in the corner, right? We are not getting complete sense who was in the corner. On the road, someone was. Someone is standing on the road, but it's not clear who was standing. In the same way, behind the tree, who is standing behind the tree, or who is behind the tree. We are not getting complete sense. Only with this word, we are getting little sense, it's, right? We are getting little bit, some sense, not complete sense. So, in this, these are the example of the phrase. Now, the definition of phrase is over. Now, I'm going to give you the definition of class. Now. Class is a group of words which contains subject and predicate. It contains one finite verb. Now, write the definition of class. I am going to write here class. Class. A uh, class. is a group of words words which contains contains subject Subject and predicate. It contains one finite word. Now, first you know what is finite. Finite word is govern. Finite word govern according to subject. When the subject will be singular. We write singular form of the verb. When subject will be plural, we write plural form of the verb. I'm writing the example. Jai Dev says. He is. Going to Kanpur. Here, in this example, sir, Jaydev says. Here, I written S, not S in left, so right. Jaydev says he is a he is going to Kanpur. One more example, you see. He is a good. So in first example, you will get here two class. Jaydev says, and then here you will get he is going to Kanpur, and in second you will get he is a good boy. These are the example of class. Now in the next exercise, we have to find out class and phrase. From the exercise, I am going to write the. Now, see the definition of class. A class is a group of words which contains subject. Contains a subject. Here you can write a subject. Contains a subject and predicate. It contains one finite verb. 
right? Now see the example. Jaydev says he is a guru. He is going to Kanpur. Now here we are getting Jaydev, subject and says. The small one is here. In this sentence we are getting two class. So Jaydev says first class. He is going to Kanpur in second. So here Jaydev is subject and predicate. You are getting only word. Here he is going to Kanpur. Subject will be, will be he. Predicate will be he is going to Kanpur. We are getting only one finite. He is good boy. In this sentence, subject will be he and is going to is he is he is a good boy. You can write any other sentence also. He writes a letter. So here he is a good boy. Subject will be he and is a good boy. Will be predicate. It contains one finite word. Now we will complete the exercises which is what is given in your book. I am going to write the sentence one by one, and you have to find out in those sentences class and phrase. In some sentences you will find two classes, one phrase. Some sentences you will find uh, more than one phrases and one class. Now let's start exercises. The phrases and circle the classes in these sentences. Some sentences may have both phrases and classes. I told you in the beginning. Now I am going to give the example. I'm going to write the first sentence. First sentence is whenever there was whenever there was a collective decision a collective decision decision to be made made the class the class turn to nandini the class turn to nandini You have to find out in this sentence phrase and class. You see whether phrase and class both given or only classes given or phrases given. So see here whenever there was a collective decision to be made, the class turn turn to Nadi. Now here see in the first the first class in here it's given only. Two class here. Whenever there was a collective decision to be made, one class, and second one is the class turned to Nandini. See here, first one. Whenever there was was there. Collective decision, decision to be made, to be here. I'm going to do it. Going to be made. Going to be made first class and second one is the class turn to Nandini. Second one is the class turn to Nandini. Here given only class. The first sentence. Whenever there was a collective decision to be made, the class turned to Nandini. So first one will be 
First, here we are getting only two classes, not phrases. So, wherever there was a collective decision to be made, first one, second class is the class, right? The class, now see it one second. Second one is the class. Second one. The class. Class. Turn to. Nandini. So in this sentence we are getting only classes, not phrases. So first one is whenever there was a collective decision to be made, first class, and second, the class turned to Nandini in the second class. Run it and give you the next example. Now I'm going to try the second sentence and we will find out class and phrase. The second sentence is The students trooped into the examination hall when the bell rang. Now, see the second one. See the second sentence. The students the Students proved proved means moved or you can say gathered together took into the examination hall examination hall When the bell rang, when the bell rang, this one is the second sentence. Here we will find classes and some phrases. See the, the students took the, into the examination hall. Here, first one will be the students took into the examination hall. And second class will be when the bell rang. Here you will get phrase also into the examination hall. See first one. First class will be the students took took into the examination hall examination hall and second class is when the bell when the well rang you will get here phrase also and phrase will be into the these are class first and second class and you will get here phrase into the examination hall it will be into the examination hall. So here you will get two classes and one phrase. Now see said why it will be class and this one will be phrase. See here you know class contains verb. 
one finite verb. So here the student trooped into the examination hall. Troop is a finite verb. It contains subject and verb. In second also when the bell rang. The bell. When the bell rang. This sentence also contains verb. And into the examination hall. Verb we are getting only little bit sense. We are getting Okay, here we are not getting this part not contains verb. Phrase does not contain verb. This is why it will be phrase. So first two verbs containing verb and third one is a phrase. Here it is no verb. So it is phrase. See one more sentence. Third word written. Anita closed her eyes Anita closed her eyes for a moment See here, you will get Anita close her eyes and for a moment, so when you take a school, so you will get one class and for a moment will be free. So in this sentence you will get one class, for class will be Anita close her eyes. Anita close her eyes for a moment. Moment and phrase will be. Phrase will be for a moment. Now see, sir. First one in this sentence, you will get one one class and one phrase. As whole, it contains verb. So first one is the class and for a moment is phrase. It doesn't give complete sense. It's giving for a moment, giving little bit sense, not giving complete sense. Over. Now we discuss about kinds of phrase. Now we'll study kinds of phrases. There are three phrases: noun phrases, adjective phrases, and adverb phrases. I'm going to write here phrases. Kinds of phrases there are three kinds of phrases First one, noun phrase. Second one, adjective phrase. Third one, adverb phrase. Or word phrase. One more given in your book, word phrase. So noun phrase. Now we are going to give you the definition. A very simple definition. Noun phrase. A noun phrase is a group of words that does the work of noun in the sentence. Noun phrase. A group of words which does the work of noun. Like noun phrase quotation. 
Noun phrase is a group of words that does the work of noun. Like, I want to buy a pen. See the definition of adjective. Adjective phrase is a group of words which does the work of adjective. Adjective phrase is a group of words which does the work of adjective. See the example. A student from your school took your father to the hospital. Here, from your school, describe a student. So it will be adjective phrase. That is clear. Now see the third one. Adverb phrase. Adverb phrase is a group of words that does the work of adverb. Now see the definition once again. Adverb phrase is a group of words that does the work of adverb. Example, her father, now see the example, he collects on the pavement. It's example of the book. He collects on the pavement. In this sentence, on the pavement, describe verbs which will be adverb phrase. One more given in your book, verb phrase. See the example of verb phrase. Her father was lying on the bed. In this sentence, was lying will be adverb or uh, verb phrase. You will get only three kinds of phrases. Noun phrase, adjective phrase and adverb phrase. But in the book, it is given one more. Verb phrase, definition will be the same. Right? Adverb. So, her father was lying on the bed. Was lying will be example of verb phrase. Example of here, this kind of sentences you have to identify the highlighted phrases. Third. I can identify the The boy was hiding. The boy was hiding behind the tree. Behind the tree. Now, the first one. I small twent quartets. A long with a long hair. With long hair. A small quartets. Long hair. And third one is behind the tree. 
behind the tree. See, in the first sentence, we are getting the first in the noun phrase. First one is noun phrase. What is this? Noun, noun phrase. Here, a small coin card is used as noun phrase. And with a long hair, it's a describe the lady. So this is adjective phrase. What do you say? Adjective, adjective phrase. And the third one is behind the tree. Describing the verb, so it will be adverb, adverb. I have given example of e. Noun phrase. First one, a uh, small quint for is Second, with a long hair, describing a subject. So it will be adjective phrase. And third one, behind the tree, describing verb. So it will be adverb phrase. It's done. Now, since we have completed our chapters, I have already given questions answer of these chapters. You can download the answer from the website and note down in your notebooks. Thank you very much. Now we will meet in the next session.